Angelus, also known more informally as Gorka Morka, is a Necron tomb world located within Ultima Segmentum, deep within a region of space known as the Goyle Stars. Sometime around early M35, an Imperial exploratory vessel known as the Eternal Vigilance would travel to Angelus for the purpose of conducting Xeno-archaeological research. Not only were the ship's complement of explorators intrigued by the vast number of large pyramidal structures that were present upon the surface of Angelus, but sought to discover the cause of the apparent sterilization of the world's biosphere, which appeared to have been artificially induced. However, sometime around 344-M35, all contact with the Eternal Vigilance would be suddenly and inexplicably severed. Despite the various attempts made by Imperial Astropaths to re-establish contact with the ship and its crew, their efforts would ultimately be in vain, and following an increase in warp storm activity throughout the Angelus system, the Eternal Vigilance and all hands upon it would be deemed forever lost to the Imperium. Little did the Imperium realise that this loss of contact was due to the arrival of a Space Hulk translating into the system, which was manned by thousands upon thousands of Orcs. After colliding with the Eternal Vigilance, the Hulk would crash into the planet's surface, creating a gargantuan impact crater known as the Skid, as well as irradiating the surrounding landscape for hundreds of square miles. Those Imperials that were exploring and studying the vast network of tunnels and catacombs that lay beneath the pyramids at the time of impact would be buried alive under hundreds of tons of sand, stone and debris, and their mindset would quickly devolve into a feral and primal state, as their priorities turned from the pursuit of knowledge to that of their immediate survival. Over the course of several generations, the descendants of these explorators would divide themselves into a number of different tribes, and bloody conflicts would frequently erupt over food, water, living space, and the few functional examples of technology that remained within their possession. Eventually, a tribe known as the Wreckers would mysteriously disappear as they explored the deepest and darkest reaches of the vast tunnel network beneath the pyramids, an event that would serve as the prelude to what would become known as the Wrecker War. Over time, individuals from various other tribes would also begin disappearing, only for their remains to be discovered at a later date having been horrifically mutilated. Ancient and horrific entities would also begin stalking the tunnels, laying waste to a number of tribal settlements and slaying all warriors that were sent to stand against them. With the arrival of these entities, which were heavily implied to be some sort of Necron construct, the Wreckers would return, leading a vast horde of these ancient horrors. The Wreckers would then offer the other tribes an ultimatum. Submit, or die. While some of the older and more established tribes initially refused to yield to these upstarts, the Wreckers would ultimately achieve total dominance, and would proceed to divide the various tribes even further, with each one now being led by a Wrecker. As the tribes began to expand further and further throughout the vast network of catacombs, tunnels that led back to the planet's surface would be discovered, leading to the events of the Big Dig. After several years of digging, the tribesmen would finally reach the surface, only to come face to face with the Orcs. The Orcs, amused and bemused in equal measure, would come to refer to these humans as Diggers. The Diggers in turn would become enamoured by the culture and technology of the Greenskins, with many of their kind attempting to emulate the Orcs in both their style of dress and mannerisms. However, this wonder and fascination with the Orcs would soon turn to anger and fear, as the Greenskins not only began to enslave the Diggers, but also plunder their tunnels and warrens for pieces of technology that they could sell on to their mechboy overlords. Despite the best efforts of the Wreckers, the Orcs were simply far too strong and too well equipped to be challenged. However, all of that would change during one fateful night. In response to the ever-increasing greenskin presence around the pyramids, the ancient horrors that had aligned themselves with the Wreckers would attack. The pyramids themselves would begin to glow with eldritch light before an unseen portal would open, disgorging an entire army of horrors whose eyes glowed bright in the darkness. The orcs would be slain by the dozens, and their vehicles utterly destroyed in the ensuing carnage, forcing the survivors to flee into the depths of the desert out of sheer terror. 
after wandering the desert for several days, the surviving orcs will be found and brought back to the settlement of Nectau. These survivors would recount the horrors of that night to the other orcs, describing how many of their allies were felled by coruscating beams of light or simply dragged deep into the tunnels beneath the pyramids before having their screams suddenly silenced. In light of this series of events, the denizens of Mechtown would decide to give the pyramids a wide berth, with the orcs henceforth referring to the region as Morgark Dürle Golskar Drexnikslag, which roughly translates to Fortress of Ancient Terrifying Power and Land of Waiting Death, Pain and Destruction. Despite this, relations between the orcs and the diggers would improve over time, even to the point where it is not uncommon to see diggers make the journey to Mechtown in order to trade scrap and other pieces of technology in exchange for weaponry or vehicles. But one question to this day remains unanswered. If the ancient horrors that align themselves with the Wreckers were indeed Necrons, then why have they chosen to defend the native digger population? While some have suggested that Angelus, now Gorkamorka, is something other than a Necron tomb world, we know for a fact that the pyramidal structures upon the world are indeed Necron in origin. As detailed within the 3rd edition Necron Codex, various reports from the exploratory team upon Angelus prior to the arrival of the Orcs would make their way into the hands of the Administratum. These reports, which are also present within Gorkamorka, that other book, go into great detail regarding the pyramids and the vast network of catacombs that lay beneath the surface. The fact that this report is present within a Necron Codex would certainly appear to support the notion that these structures are indeed Necron in origin. In addition, as detailed within the book Diggernob, the horrors that assaulted the orcs would not only emerge from a previously unseen portal, but many orcs would be slain by beams of light. The portal that had been described by the orcs appears to be a crude description of an Eternity Gate, an example of wormhole teleportation technology utilised by the Necrons which allows for the near instantaneous transportation of troops from one location to another. The beams of light that were described as being unleashed by the horrors appear to be referring to the signature gorse weaponry of the Necron race, which are frequently depicted as generating intense flashes of green tinted energy when fired. The most likely reason behind the Necrons aligning themselves with the Wreckers is simply a result of the unique personality quirks exhibited by the world's resident Necron Overlord. As mentioned earlier, sometime prior to the awakening of the Necrons upon Angelus, the Wrecker tribe would disappear and be considered lost for an indeterminate period of time, before returning alongside their new Necron allies. Because of this, it's possible that while the Wreckers were navigating the vast network of catacombs, they stumbled across a tomb that housed within it a high-ranking Necron, such as the world's overlord or one of their cryptex servants. Because the Diggers had degenerated into a more primitive, tribalistic society, it's possible that upon discovering the Necrons, the Wreckers would have viewed such constructs as being none other than the living dead, due in part to the skeletal appearance of many Necron constructs. This could have then led to the Wreckers displaying some form of submission, or perhaps even making a gesture of subservience to the Xenos, such as by bowing to them out of fear or reverence. Perhaps the Wreckers even began performing acts of human sacrifice to the Necrons in order to appease what they believed to be the living dead or even godlike figures. After all, as mentioned earlier, prior to the events of the Wrecker War, diggers from various tribes would disappear before their mutilated remains were discovered at a later date. Perhaps these acts of mutilation were in fact ritualistic in nature, performed as an act of worship towards the Necrons themselves, although it is also possible that such acts of butchery may have been conducted by a type of Necron construct, such as a warrior infected with the Flayer virus. If a high-ranking Necron, such as a Theron, had witnessed this display of submission and respect, then the Xenos could have viewed such behaviour as quaint or perhaps even charming in its own way and may have decided to, for lack of a better term, adopt the Wreckers as his new servants or pets. While some Necron lords are known to demonstrate a hatred for all forms of biological life, or non-Necrons in general, others are known to be more tolerant or even curious of the younger organic races that inhabit the galaxy. 
In the case of the latter, this has not only resulted in battlefield alliances being made against a common foe, such as that shown during the course of the Cryptus campaign, which saw the Necrons align themselves with the Blood Angels Space Marine chapter, but even the bartering and exchange of goods, as shown when the Necron Lord, Trazen the Infinite, traded a vast stockpile of pure and untainted Astartes gene seed to the Emperor's Children Apothecary, Fabius Bile, in exchange for a perfect clone of the Primarch, Fulgrim. Alternatively, perhaps the resident Necron Lord upon Angelus had simply decided to study the native Digger population, perhaps seeing if these primitive humans can be steered towards some semblance of what a Necron could deem to be civilised. If this were indeed the case, then this could very well explain as to why the Necrons chose to wait the Wreckers in unifying the other Digger tribes, perhaps even intending to replicate the history and political intrigue of the ancient Necron tier empire in microcosm. Perhaps instead, the Necrons had chosen to conduct some sort of zoological study of the Diggers, either out of simple curiosity, or perhaps even to determine if it is in fact possible to transfer the personality engrams of the Necrons into bodies of flesh and blood once more, allowing them to effectively undo the effects of the biotransference process. If this were indeed the case, this could certainly explain as to why the Necrons seemingly came to the aid of the Diggers when the Orcs attempted to enslave them. However, it is also equally possible that the Necrons simply viewed the Greenskins as being the greater threat, and sought to eliminate them so as to prevent their tomb complex from being looted and destroyed. On the other hand, instead of striking some sort of bargain with the Necrons, perhaps the Wreckers had found a way to somehow gain control over them. Perhaps the Wreckers, during their expedition into the deepest part of the world's catacombs, had uncovered some sort of relic or artifact which allowed them to bind the Xenos to their collective will, or maybe even deceive the Necrons into following their commands. While such a possibility is, admittedly, extremely unlikely, seeing as how lower ranking Necrons are bound to the will of their overlord through the use of inbuilt loyalty engrams, given the right circumstances, such a notion is still theoretically possible. For example, the Wreckers could have discovered that the world's resident Necron Lord had been destroyed as a result of some unforeseen cataclysm, and that for whatever reason, the Lord's personality and consciousness failed to be transferred into a newly constructed body. In this case, the Wreckers could have obtained the Fallen Lord's Staff of Light, an artifact commonly wielded by Necron Lords that serves as both a weapon as well as the symbol of their authority. If the neural network of the entire tomb complex had also been irreparably damaged in some way, then perhaps the Wreckers, now wielding the Fallen Lord's Staff of Light, may have deceived the lesser Necron constructs into believing that they were indeed the world's Pharaon or Overlord. After all, it is typically only those higher ranking Necrons, such as Lords, Cryptex, and military officers, which retain any notable degree of sentience, consciousness, or sense of self, with lesser constructs being reduced to little more than mindless automata in many cases. However, the odds of such an event occurring to allow total dominion over an entire tomb complex would appear to be astronomically low. In either case, the truth behind as to why the Necrons have chosen to grant the Diggers their protection are known only to the Necrons themselves, and as such, it seems unlikely that we will ever know the truth behind their motives. What do you think? Leave a comment below, and thanks for watching.